my heart is overwhelmed with joy because today is a historic day to have a, a dear woman of God precious, anointed, experienced, loving, lovely to be a, and it's, a, it's Mother's Day so I mean we, I know you've celebrated Pastor Wu, but we as a church want to also celebrate a mother who has come into our midst hallelujah so because this stage is so high far up we, we want to do a presentation for her so then when she comes she doesn't have to go back down and you know Jesus came down once and then came with <laughs> I mean so we have a bouquet prepared and Pastor Wu will be coming up and we will be very grateful to welcome please help me let's welcome Episcopal sister Adelaide hey well, come on let's celebrate her as she comes for your information she's Pastor Wu's icon Pastor Wu admires her and we all do Please, let's receive Lady Pasta. All right, ladies and gentlemen, she came with a group of ladies. I'm sure she will say that. Please help me and let's receive to courage for the first time. Episcopal Sister Adelaide Hayward Mills. Hallelujah. Wow, what a welcome. <laughs> I'm surprised that I'm here. <laughs> but we thank God anyway. Amen. Amen. Shall we pray? Father, thank you for this time. Thank you that you know everything from the beginning. And thank you that you have purposed that we should be together this morning. I pray that your purpose for bringing us together will be fulfilled. Amen. Holy Spirit, you are the teacher. You are the guide. You are the unction. You are the balm of Gilead that breaks weights and loads. This morning, let the word of God bring light. Let burdens be lifted. Let us be more like Jesus. Turn our hearts towards you. And Lord, pour your anointing and your grace on this vessel of clay that I may declare your word as of the oracles of God. Thank you for your grace and the honor in being a vessel that you have chosen to use. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please sit down. <laughs> well... It's a pleasure to be here, and I want to thank God for this honor and being here on Mother's Day. Sometimes some things look coincidental, but God is in it. Amen. So um, I thank God for that, and I also bring you greetings from my husband, Bishop Dyke Ewart Mills. He specifically and intentionally sent his love. And he said to me, don't forget to send my love to Pastor David too. So I have done what I was bidden to do. Amen. So I thank him for allowing me to be here. Please sit down. You behave like lighthouse people. Small or no, you are standing. Small. I want to also greet your pastor, Reverend David Entry, and his godly wife, Awo. And I want to salute their obedience to God. I can feel God's presence here, and I can feel the spirit of liberty. 
And I can see that as a church, you are well worth it. And so the word doesn't bounce back. So God bless you. Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is there. Amen. Amen. So sit down. (laughs) I came with some lady pastors. And like uh, Reverend David mentioned, first of all, Bishop I's wife, Episcopal sister, Abana is here. So please stand up and give us a wave. And then we have some lady pastors with us who are from Switzerland, from Ghana, and from the UK. Please stand up and let's acknowledge your presence. So God bless you and thank you for coming. Amen. Amen. One of them was the co-conspirator with Reverend David to get me here. So when Reverend David said, let's stand up and rejoice that mommy is here, then Episcopal Sister Linda said to me, me, I don't want to get up because they wanted me to be in Lighthouse. <laughs> But we thank God in all things. (laughs) I want to say that I can see the spirit of excellence at work in your church. And uh, the Bible says that Daniel had an excellent spirit. I can see it all over. And I've already enjoyed your service. We can easily share the grace and go home. So thank you so much. And also your gesture of honoring your first lady touched my heart. Amen. Amen. Because most of the time, uh, church mothers and pastors' wives, their work is behind the scenes. And so a lot of people think they do nothing. Because even if they'll preach maybe on Mother's Day (laughs) or Women's Week, you know, I remember somebody telling one of our lady pastors, because, I don't know, she was talking to her and she said, she does nothing, that's about me. She just sits in front and wears pretty little dresses. That's all she does. But when the lady was there, she said, can you believe? She says, oh, I'm not bothered though. Because I know what God knows I do. So, I mean, if I wear pretty little dresses, I even have to wear more pretty little dresses. So, thank you for honoring your pastor's wife. And when you honor, God will also honor you. And God will remember you. Amen. Your pastor said he's not one to remember dates and anniversaries. I think it's a male disease. And it comes every so often. But they are forgiven even before they sin. I remember early on in my marriage, one day, my husband did not remember my birthday. So it was two in the afternoon, and I sent him a card. And when he opened it, inside the card I wrote, Happy birthday to me. (laughs) He said... Sister, you are some whip. What does this card mean? But anyway, since then, he has not forgotten again. (laughs) Amen. So happy Mother's Day to all mothers. I want to say that in the Bible, mothers are not just biological mothers. The Bible says that Eve means mother of the living. So a mother is anybody who gives birth or gives life to something. Amen. Amen. So Eve is the mother of the living. And for Sarah, the Bible said that princes and kings shall come out of you. So God changed her name from Sarah to Sarah because of the destiny and the covenant that God had with her. Amen. Amen. Rebecca went to inquire because there was a shaking in her stomach. 
Some of us would have said, oh, these boys. I hear from ultrasound that they are two boys. Boys are so boisterous. But Rebecca was spiritual. So she went to inquire of the prophet. And they said to her, two nations and your womb. So it's not just giving birth biologically, but giving birth to things that will bless humanity, things that will change lives. I mean, two nations. When you don't have a spiritual eye, you say two boys. But when you are spiritual, it can be revealed to you that. Basically, she had uh, uh, Jacob and Esau. But in reality, she had given birth to two nations. So mothers are not just the biological, you go to the labor ward. But you can birth whatever God has put in you, including two nations. Amen. Now, when you look at the life of Naomi, she referred to Ruth and Opa as daughters. Naomi had lost her husband and she had lost her two sons. But she said, return you, my daughters, to your mother's house and to your gods when they were seeing her off. And then when Ruth was seeing Boaz and all that, she said, my daughter, sit down. The man will not rest so he has done what he has to do. You know, my, hus- my, ma- my father told me when I met my husband, my father was very strict. So I kept my relationship from him for a while. And then when I finished law school, he saw that there was this special person. The person would come and visit me, whatever. But my fa- for my father, if you visited me at 7 p.m., it was too late. If you called me at 7 p.m., it was too late. You can't speak to his daughter. So anyway, <laughs> my husband and I had been fasting and praying, and my husband used to call my father the lion. And then my father said to me, oh, I can see that this person, is he special to you? And I said, yes, he's special to me. And he said, so does he talk about marriage? I said, yes. And my father said, how often? I said, all the time. And my dad said, that's a good sign. Just marry him. A man who is the one who talks about marriage. No, you always asking. So when is the date? So when are we starting counseling? Sisters, it's a sign. Amen. So Naomi said to Ruth, once the man is interested, he will not rest till he has done what he should do. And she referred to her as my daughter. She had not biologically given birth to Ruth, but she had birthed her in ministry. She had birthed her in the things of God, and she had birthed her prophetically. Amen. Amen. I know that for some, Mother's Day is not a happy day. For some, maybe we've lost our mothers. For some, we have very difficult relationships with our mothers. But God gives you different kinds of mothers so that you will pass this relay in life. In Ghana, when people go to high school, they say they have even school mothers. Because your mother doesn't go to the boarding school with you. But somebody becomes a mother figure in your life. So today is a time to appreciate the mothers and the mother figures in your life. Don't wait till they pass away. Then you come and say that, oh, I was going to call her. I was going to send this. And then now, timely valuation is important. The woman with the alabaster box, she was on time. But Mary Magdalene and Co., they came with spices after to annoy Jesus. And it was too late. The angel said, he's risen. He's no longer here. Amen. So if you are going to value somebody, value the person now. If you are going to appreciate somebody, appreciate the person now. Amen. I have also found that I have some friends who lost their mothers before maybe they could be aware as adults. And they seem to have this um, super image of who their mother would have been. I spoke to a young man recently. He said, oh, I think if my mother were here, my life would have been different. And I said, how different? Oh, I would have experienced family, uh, motherly love in another way. 
I would have experienced family love in another. I said, what is family love? He said, well, when I went to my friend's house, the mother brought her, him breakfast in bed. So that's family love. <clears throat> I said, really, young man, I knew your mother very well. And with all this stupidity, your mother would have given you slaps, one on the left, one on the right. So do not super imagine what your mother would have been. <clears throat> but many people who don't have that opportunity think that, oh, if I had a mother, when I had a baby, the mother will come. My mother will help me care for, but I have news for you. My mother is alive. My mother is 83 years old. My mother has never been at any birth that I've had. My mother and I are very close, and we are very loving and chummy chummy. But when I had my firstborn, I had my firstborn in Switzerland. She was in England doing whatever. She was head of Teachers Union Education International. When I had Joshua, she was in Denmark. When I had Daniela, she was in Belgium. And when I had Paula, she was in Greenland. So you see, she's alive. But she has never touched any baby of mine before. And whenever she would come, even when I'm bathing my baby, my mother stands a bit afar and says, Hey, you do so well. You have everything under control. Oh, I'm surprised. You've grown up to be so mature. And when my children were growing up, she was always very busy. She'll come, but she'll come with gifts, and she'll be singing. And my mother tells me that she, she doesn't want anything. When she's coming to your house, as we say in the Ghanaian parlance, ye de de, ye de de. that's all she wants. She doesn't want, just make noise that I've arrived. And then, when I had my children, they were growing, she would come to them. She has a relationship with them, but she would say to them, Hey, absentee grandmother has come. <clears throat> so those of you who are too sad, that if your mother were alive, you will have some type of life be. You are super imagining in your thoughts, but in reality, she may not have been like that. So be comforted. Amen. God also may give you a remarkable adoptive mother, like how Naomi adopted Ruth. Or you may have a rem rem remarkable stepmother. My mother says that from childhood you are programmed that stepmothers are evil. So I asked her why. She said Hansel and Gretel, Cinderella and Rapunzel, all of them, stepmothers were maltreating them. So before you even meet the stepmother, you have a mind. But some of you, your stepmothers are actually blessings from God. And even if things were a certain way, believe God's word in Romans 8, 28, that we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. So happy Mother's Day to all of us. And to those of us who have the desire to be mothers, may God grant you your heart's desire. Amen. But children are not just biological children. And sometimes we cut our lives short by concentrating only on biological children. They are a blessing. But you can have so many children that will like meet the needs that God wants to meet. So open your eyes and be a mother to somebody. Be a spiritual mother to somebody. Be somebody that somebody can point to in church that she brought me up in the things of God. She followed me up. Paul said, my little children over whom I travel to Christ be formed in you. May you be a mother who travels until Christ is formed in others. Happy Mother's Day. Amen. And for those of you brothers, please celebrate your wives today. Some of you, you never take your wife anywhere. And then when we say it, you say, hey, Lady Reverend, do you know how much a restaurant meal costs? If I multiply it, I will get 20 tins of sardine. 
May God forgive you. <laughs> Amen. I am not saying you should live beyond your means, but I'm saying that there are creative ways of honoring your wife. Amen, somebody. <laughs> this morning, I want to preach about Mother, it's your honor. Mother, it's your honor. Amen. Bishop Dag has written a book for ladies. It's called Daughter, You Can Make It. And I'll encourage you to get it. It has so many facets of our lives. Amen. Judges chapter 4. Judges chapter 4. And the people of Israel again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord after Ehud died. And the Lord, not the devil, sold them into the hand of Jabin, king of Canaan, who reigned, reigned in Hazor. The commander of his army was Sisera, who lived in Harosheth Hagoim. Then the people of Israel cried out to the Lord for help, for he had 900 chariots of iron, and he oppressed the people of Israel cruelly for 20 years. Now Deborah, a prophetess, the wife of Lapidoth, was judging Israel at the time. She used to sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel, in the hill country of Ephraim. And the people of Israel came up to her for judgment. She sent and summoned Barak, the son of Abinuam, from Kedesh Naphtali, and said to him, Has not the Lord God of Israel commanded you? Go gather your men at Mount Tabor, taking 10,000 from the people of Naphtali and the people of Zebulun, and I will draw out Sisera, the general of Jabin's army, to meet you by the river Kishon with his chariots and his troops, and I will give him into your hand. Barak said to her, if you will go with me, I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. And she said, I will surely go with you. Nevertheless, the road on which you are going will not lead to your glory. For the Lord will sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. Then Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kedesh. Amen. Amen. Now when we look at the curriculum vitae of Deborah, the Bible says that she was a prophetess. The Bible also says that she was a wife of Lapidoth. The Bible also says she was a judge. So one woman was wearing three hats. Today's woman probably wears more than three hats. I always say that to be a mother means you are many things. You are a nutritionist because you have to produce balanced meals at home. You are a fashionista because you are always coordinating your children's clothes and what they wear and also commenting on clothes that are not appropriate. Well, I hope you do because some mothers rather encourage the, the, the daughters to show more. You are a doctor and a nurse because you touch the forehead of the children. Say, mm. You have a temperature. Let me look under your eyes. It's a big pill. You have now become a doctor. And even to your husband, you are a doctor. Amen. You are a school teacher. Because they bring homework to you. And sometimes it's not easy. I was saying in charismatic church that my daughter brought tree homework. I, mean, I don't even speak tree. I speak fancy. I don't speak tree. But there was no helper. <laughs> so I decided to help her. So when I read, and I didn't do, do reading of tree at school, but when I looked, I thought that uh, I can read. So I helped her. 
But the next day when she came, she was angry. I said, what is it? I got zero. I got zero. You, mommy, when you teach, people get zero. I said, you got zero in the tree. All the things you said were wrong. I said, hey, after your mother's efforts, <laughs> is that how you show gratitude? Sometimes they even bring maths and you can't do it. See, me, I'm not... A maths person. I'm a pure art student and without apology. In fact, there are times when Bishop has preached about the ungrateful servant and how his master forgave him and the servant will not forgive. And then he will say, so when you multiply, the master forgave him this amount. When you multiply by this, what is, then the church people will be saying, oh, two, eight. No, no, no. Two, eight, three. But me, my mind hasn't moved. Up. They should finish calculating and come. But I'm still saddled with homework. Amen. So although she got zero in three, she didn't get zero in French because I did French. Amen. So we are teachers, whether we like it or not. We are career counselors, whether we like it or not. We are lawyers. Because we are always settling disputes. Mommy, he took my ball. Okay, you come. Hey, you sit there. You go. Hey, you. This. We have become advocates. Pro bono advocates. And then we are partners to our husbands. Like Reverend David said, when you have been with somebody, there's a fruit. <laughs> Amen. So after doing all this, we have become cleaners. We work at the launderette. We are always sorting laundry to what the colors, which one is what. And your husband is always asking you for his socks and all these things. So we have become launderettes, laundromats, and dry cleaners, whether we like it or not. And in the midst of all that, we are also supposed to look good. We have become pastors and priests to our children because we have to teach them this is how to have quiet time. This is how to do so. We wear so many hats. And it was the same with Deborah. She was a prophetess, yes. God had called her. She had the calling of God on her life. God had a purpose that she had to fulfill. At the same time, she was the wife of Lapidus. And then when she was a wife of Lapidus, she was also a judge in Israel. In fact, she sat under that tree, uh, the tree became called uh, Deborah. And she was judge, okay, you, what is the problem? You, what is the problem? I remember some years ago, something was happening that I wasn't happy about in the church. And I felt that, it wasn't general, but in my, in my world, and I felt that, ah, but this church, as I've come, I worked 10 years as a, as a state attorney. So now as I've come, you know, I feel that the, the, the appreciation, they just feel that I'm there. Ah, how? So at a point I said, oh, I'm going to the bench. So I said to Bishop Saki, I said, look, I'm going to the bench. Because you people, you think that I'm just walking here. And when I go to the bench, you people will even appear there. And then they will say, they will knock the gavel, and they will say, her ladyship at Lady Ward Mills presiding. And then I'll come out from the back, and when I come, you people will stand up, you bishop and all of you, you will stand up. And they'll say, court rise, you will stand up. And then when I sit down, if, if, if I do this before you can sit down, you know, and then you will see that I'm also somebody. <laughs> and then he said, Oh, every day we hear these stories. It's not anything. <laughs> so she was also a judge. People's matters. Whether it was land, whether because Israel had no king in those days. And yet, she has to balance all. She couldn't say, oh, I'm just a mother and I want to stay like that. You know, motherhood has a lot of uh, demands. So because of that, I can't go to church, I can't judge, I can't walk in the prophetic, I can't do this, I can't do that. Because, you know, motherhood, lady reverend, is also a calling and I found my calling and it's okay. No. 
You are more than one part. And God has a purpose in every area for your life. And God's will is that we should have a good balance in our lives. The Bible says in Proverbs 11:1, 1, I believe, a false balance is an abomination. <clears throat> so sometimes, some mothers too, or women are so spiritual that they don't cook at home. There's no food. When you ask them, they say they are casting out devils at Clapham Common. They are casting out devils on Kensington High Street. And they were not able to attend to earthly things like you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So when you become so prophetic that you can't walk also in the motherliness, there's a problem. And if you become so motherly that you can't walk in God's calling, there's also a problem. And if you become so prophetic that what you should do practically like being a judge, you are not able also to do that, then your life will be lopsided. Amen, ladies. So when you look at Proverbs 31, the woman, she's, she's so many-sided. Amen. She's not just, oh, I'm just married. The Bible says that the heart of her husband trusts in her. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. But she also goes to the merchant ships. She also sees that her merchandise is good. She sees a field, she considers it, and she buys it. She also has handmaidens who help her at home that she has to manage, and she makes sure that they have eaten. Her children are also clothed for the winter, and she's not afraid of what is to come. At the same time, she stretches out her hand with kindness, and in her mouth is the word of kindness. Amen. So you cannot be unilateral, one-faceted. That's not God's will. And even when it happens that way, you will not be a fulfilled woman. Because as God has a calling on your life, and all that you want to do, I'm not demeaning motherhood, but I'm saying that if you keep yourself just in that hole, you will resent it even when your husband comes home. It's like he, he has gone to talk to adults at work. And you have been with these people, okay, 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 no adults to <laughs> uh, 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 fellowship with, you see. So when we do that, we ourselves will begin to die inside because we will not fulfill our calling, we will not feel fulfilled, and it will lead to a lot of problems. God has not created any one man to fulfill all your needs. There's nobody like that. If there's somebody like that, then the person has become God. God will always leave a part of your life where you will need him. And so that you will bring him into your life and make him Lord of your life. I know before you married, you thought that, <laughs> maybe I've met my, my soulmate. <laughs> I don't even have to talk for him to understand. When I do, mm, he understands. When I do, ah, he gets it. You don't know that it's too much Netflix that was giving you those ideas. But God gives us diversity in our lives and places calls and destinies and prophetic things on our lives so that we will be balanced. In fact, we thank God for the church of God. Some of us, if church were not here, we would be in the mental hospital by now. By his word, his presence, the brethren, it keeps us going. <laughs> Amen. So yes, be a mother, but also find out what is God's will for your life. In our church now, we have something we call Teddy Pastoring. It was there, but it became more prominent during the pandemic. Teddy Pastoring means you may not be able to go out from house to house, but you can do telephone pastoring. It doesn't mean we've thrown out physical pastoring, but the telephone pastoring also has a place of something that it does. So if you know, I'm always at home, okay, pastor, I want to be available for telepastoring so that I will also feel connected and I can do something in the house of God. 
may that be your story. Amen. If indeed we are going to learn from Deborah. She's the first prophetess mentioned in the Bible. There are others called Hulda, Noadia, who was a very bad prophetess and was uh, worrying Nehemiah. And then another prophetess who came into the temple. The Bible says she served God by fasting and praying day and night because she was a widow. And she had been doing that till she was 84 years old. So God has something for everybody to do in his house. Amen. Amen. Then she sent and summoned Barak, the son of Abinuam, from Kadesh, Naphtali. Amen. Amen. Deborah was a woman, and in this era, it was more of a man's world than it is today. But she needed to obey God. Now, this whole thing is set in a background where the people of Israel are not doing what they should do in the sight of God. They are, it's a time of apostasy. They've walked away from God. They are not faithful to God. They are walking in all the evil, including the evil of the unbelievers. This is the time at which Deborah emerges. In the time of evil, in the time of sin, in the time when the Bible says the Israelites had sold themselves to do evil. That's the time at which Deborah is exercising her gift. Sometimes the more the darkness, the stronger the light that God makes you. Amen. And there was a known enemy. And it had been for 20 years. Can you believe it? Oppression for 20 years. And the commander of this king, Jabin, Jabin king of Canaan, the commander of his army was called Sisera. And he oppressed the children of Israel for so many years. The Bible says he had 900 chariots of iron. And um, Dick says that each chariot was drawn by three men. So it was a formidable army. In fact, when victory comes, Deborah says that for 20 years, nobody could walk on the highway. The Israelites were hiding. After this story comes the story of uh, Gideon, who now came to hide to trash the corn and all that. Nobody was coming to the streets. Men were afraid. Men were trembling. And nobody could overcome this enemy. But God called on Deborah in the time of difficulty. Can God rely on you in these days of so much pervasiveness and evil where Christians don't want to even stand for anything? But Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel. People are doing gay pride parades and things, and they are not shy. People are calling themselves queer, and they are not shy. And you, a child of God, in the time of evil, you as a mother, you can arise as a Deborah. Amen. And she summoned Barak, who was a man. He was an accomplished army man. He knew how to do battle. But the times were such that he was not going to go anywhere. Beloved, my husband was preaching in Singapore and said, can't you do just a little bit more? If Deborah had not done her part, Barak would not have done his part. So it's, we don't have to discount as mothers and even as ladies our contribution. Amen. Sometimes your contribution looks like nothing. But it is part of the whole. And your obedience makes God's destiny unfold. Amen. Every year we have Give Thyself Holy conference, which is for pastors and leaders. And often we have about 42 nations who are represented. So we have it in Accra. And it's a massive program, and it involves so much financially, energy-wise, and in every way. Now, most of the time, I go and present my budget. My budget is hospitality and how 
to look after the pastors and to look after the VVIPs and to look after. So, if the pastors will be about 100 and something, the VVIPs are about 900. And then there's another group, maybe board members, guests, maybe 200, 300, different groups. So, in the end, it can easily come to 1,000, 1,005. But if you saw me, you will not see the 1,005 because some are here, some are there, some are there. And you even know what I do. So, I would always go to my husband with a budget through one of my associates. She's not here. So when she goes for the meeting, my husband is not in the meeting, but the planners and the, And then they always throw our thing away. That, eh, our budget is too long, and it's this. And I'm, I'm like, oh, we have cut so many corners, and what we are giving you is subsidized. You are not buying rice, you are not buying oil, you are not buying... because. We found other ways, you know, so but every year they threw our list away. Then this my associate said to me, Mommy, but why do you bother? Every day they threw the thing away. Let's stop with it. When they come there themselves, they won't get food, they will see. So, I mean, <laughs> why, why? Why, 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 why? Every day stress, every day. And then I said that they don't know what they are doing, Shelley. You see, they think they know what they are doing. They don't know what they are doing, including they and their father. They don't know. <laughs> like when I go home, I tell my husband, okay, so we took our budget and it was Yes, because the people are coming for a spiritual meeting. They are not coming because they want to eat rice and stew. They are coming because of the word. It's not because of... <laughs> and then... About two or three o'clock, I'll be standing and I say, You're coming because of it. Yes! Yes! It's not rice as chewing. <laughs> these type of things. Then I'll say, Oh, okay. Look, I know you are stressed. You are, <laughs> you are busting people. You are paying hotel. I know. I know that the things on your head, they are a lot. But you know, you give me what you have. You know, so. Even on one occasion, I said, Look at the amount per person. Where in Ghana will you get such an amount? And then I explained something to you that he took his phone. Look, Prince, but why don't you also give me the facts? Eh? Why do you say? <laughs> so anyway, they said it was a spiritual meeting. I did my best. Then the meeting started. Oh, the first break, no. I saw that my husband was coming towards me with some people. So he came and said, oh, Bishop. Uh, this is from Zambia. Bishop, this from K. Oh, uh, this is my wife. Yes. So, what? Please go with her. She will see to you. Please go with her. She will look after you. Amen, ladies. I came to tell you that it's not everything you should believe. And you can easily discount your contribution and say that, oh, it's not spiritual. They are coming for it. The, and then. My husband told me once that, hmm, mommy, I've discovered something, eh, about give thyself holy. I said, really, what? He said, huh? You see, Benny Hinn, all these great men of God who come, hey, when they arrive and they are thanking me, the first line, thank you for exceptional hospitality. Not the anointing, no. Not the word, no. Exceptional hospitality. Let the Deborahs arise. Let the Deborahs do their part. Let the Deborahs not look down on what God calls them to do. Amen. Sometimes I look at it, I say, one day I'll write a book. All these stories, I'll write a book. He said that is one of the things that has surprised me. He said, well, they'll talk about the unction, the pastors, the mommy. That one is a later paragraph. The first paragraph is reception and care. Now, after all these hassles, you can easily say, there's evil in Israel. I'm just, you know, my part is not important. But if she had not called Barak, that victory would not have come. So she did her part. And you too must do your part. And should not look down on what your part is. You may think, oh, my part is not preaching. My part is not this. But, you know, a lot of the spouses who come, 
When I go back maybe to their countries, then they say to me, oh, wow, when we came to Ghana, we learned so much. So our ministries have changed. Our lives have changed. Our, our way of even uh, uh, presenting or looking after uh, men of God has changed. Has changed completely. Thank you. But if you don't do your part, and you think that rice and stew is not spiritual, and you think that kebab is not spiritual, the kingdom of God will be missing something vital. Amen, somebody. So Deborah, Deborah summoned Barak and gave the word that she should give. So she said, <laughs> I remembered my spiritual meeting. Look. <laughs> she said to Barak, Has not the Lord God of Israel commanded you? Go gather your men at Mount Tabor, taking 10,000 from the people of Naphtali and from the people of Zebulun. And I, God, will draw out Sisera the general of Jabin's army, to meet you by the river Kishon with his chariots and his troops, and I will give him into your hand. So Deborah was not an army commander, but she had a word from God that draw 10,000 men, take them from Naphtali, take them from Zebulon. You, Deborah, do your part. Let Barak do his part, and I, God, will draw Sisera. So God needs you in the puzzle. God needs Barak in the puzzle. And God needs himself to bring about the victory. <laughs> now what the world tells us is, let men compete with women. Let women compete with men. And let women say, I want to do what the men do. Amen. Yes, all this is that Deborah was doing a man could also do. But at the time that she found herself in that space, it had become her responsibility. But she needed to tell Barak what God had said. She couldn't do what Barak was doing because there's division of labor. You see, I was talking to some young girls and they said that why do they have to be the ones to manage the house when we both work, when we come home? Why is it my thing? And these are not people born in Europe, they are in Ghana by internet. <laughs> and even when I tell them, oh, it's not so, then they look at each other and say, patriarchy, patriarchy. <laughs> but they were asking me why, and I said that I don't see service as demeaning. I feel that when you are a child, Jesus said, if you want to be great, in God's kingdom, learn to be the servant, not the king, the servant of all. So I said that you should have a servant spirit. And also, with my husband, I see division of labor because he will be organizing grass, painting, whatever. I don't do that. And then I do the other things. So our roles are different, but it doesn't mean my role is inferior or his role is whatever. God needs all of us. Amen. Amen. And the interesting thing is that Barak says that <laughs> if you go with me, I will go. Hey! <laughs> but if you will not go with me, I will not go. Beloved, not all the men say that, but it is in their heads. When they are doing things and we don't go with them, there's something missing. <laughs> But when they are doing things and you go with them, there's a certain encouragement that comes. The Bible says, as refining pot to silver, so is a man to his praise. I remember I was in London with my husband, I think Piccadilly Circus, and we were going to have lunch. And then he said, let's pray. And then when he prayed, he said, God... Thank you for the privilege. Thank you that we are sitting in Piccadilly Circus. Thank you that we are about to order some nice meal. Thank you that, hey. So when he finished, I said, ah, you are very cute. But we all came here when we were young. So your prayers as if we've never been here before. And I said to him, you are very cute. And he just smiled. 
Hey, when we went to Ghana, I heard it in the preaching plains. And my wife said, I am very cute. And my wife said, you are very cute. Amen. If you go with me, I will go. How many ministries have been destroyed because of our attitude, ladies? How many callings have been dismantled because we, we refuse to go? And we saw it at his calling, not God's calling. But God calls you, whether you are a helpmeet, whether you are a follower, it's also a calling. So Barak said, if you will go with me, Deborah, I will go. But if you will not go with me, I will not go. What was Deborah going to provide? Encouragement. Prophetic comforts. Prophetic insight. And prophetic light. May we rise up, ladies, and be such that when they are going, they'll say, if you don't go, I will not go. Amen. Amen. Am I making sense? Deborah said, I'll surely go with you. Nevertheless, the road on which you are going will not lead to your glory. For the people who sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. Then Deborah arose. You see, it's not enough to just talk. I will go. A lady came to my, a, a missionary found a wife and brought her to meet me in my office. So I said, oh. Nice meeting you, she was a pleasant, nice girl. And I said, do you know that he's going on missions? <laughs> oh, yes, mommy, I know. <laughs> and I said, do you know what it means? It means your life will change. It means that you are now going to look for a job in a strange land. It means you may not even get the requisite papers on time. It means you may have to find something else to do. <laughs> oh, yes, mommy, I know. Anyway. <laughs> Fast forward, two babies after. She came to have the baby, and then she came to my office. And she said to me, hey, Mommy, I wanted to ask you a question. Is it okay if my husband stays on the mission field, I stay in Ghana, I work, and then I'll be sending him money from time to time? And I said, ah, but you, I asked you this question. Whether you can marry a missionary, whether you can marry a pastor, whether you can marry somebody in the ministry, and she said, ah, but mommy, that one, I had not tasted it before, but now I've tasted it, I can see that I can't. Hey! Today, as I speak, the man is no longer in the ministry. If you will go with me, I will go. If you will not go with me, I will not go. So Deborah didn't just speak. Hey, get up, do Nebulon. She said, I will go, and her actions, she arose. So a lot of us pay lip service to the call of God. But when God calls, will you arise? It's a time of difficulty. You, you are walking by faith. God says that he will, he will destroy all these. How? You don't know how. But you just have faith in his word. And that moves you. Deborah arose. You too must arise. Turn to the lady nearest you and say, you too must arise. <laughs> So, well, Barak did what he should do. And then verse 12, when Sisera was told that Barak, the son of Abinuam, had gone up to Mount Tabor, Sisera called out his chariots, God was at work, and all the men, and he went to the river, not knowing that it's God's appointment. Deborah did not stop her input into Barak's life. She's still speaking into his life. So she says in verse 14, And Deborah said to Barak, Up! For this is the day in which the Lord has given Sisera into your hand. Does not the Lord go out before you? Every time Deborah spoke, Barak would react. Every time Deborah spoke, Barak would go forward. Every time Deborah spoke, ba Barak will advance. Amen. The Bible says the gift of prophecy is given for exhortation, exhortation, comfort, and there's a second, a third one. Exhortation, comfort, and it will come. 
I will remember. So she continued to walk in her gift. Sometimes we don't continue in the things of God, depending on what meets us. She went to the battlefield as a woman. She doesn't have any sword. She doesn't have any chariots. She doesn't have anything, but she's just there to fulfill her call. So when it's time, you've gone to get Zebulon, you've gone to, you don't know that you should get up and go and fight. Deborah has to say, up! Get up now! And go for it. Amen! It's your calling sees now. Some of us, we are very faithful when we are single. When God gives you a husband, it's a problem. You were very faithful when God gave you a child. It has become a stumbling block. You were very faithful when you had nothing. When God put a red carpet in your house, it has become a problem. Now even prayer, you don't pray. But the Bible says continue in the things you have learned and have been convinced of. Faithfulness is unto death, not just now. So the different changing scenes of life should find you consistent by his grace and by his mercy. Amen, somebody. <laughs> she said, this is the day that God has given Barak. Verse 16, Barak pursued and Sisera fell by the sword. Verse 17, but Sisera fled away on foot to the tent of Jael, the wife of Heba. And what did Jael do? Another woman, verse 18. Jael came out to meet Sisera and said to him, you see, I don't think that there should be competition among women, among Christians, about God using us, you know? And a lot of people are attracted to what is public, like public speaking, stage ministry, you want to be seen. But the Bible says your father who sees in secret, he rewards you openly. So we come across Jael, who is a housewife. She is a housewife. And the Bible says that her husband has moved to live, to build a bit far away from the Israelites. And is at peace with this Sisera. So Sisera is running. The, the army commander that terrified Israel because of Deborah's obedience, Barak's obedience, and God's showing up. He gets off the chariot and he's running for dear life. When he's running, he meets Jael. And Jael speaks to him by being inviting. She says, turn aside, my Lord. Turn aside to me. Don't be afraid. I mean, when I read the Bible, men are pathetic. <laughs> Sometimes the things they cannot see. When I look at the story of Delilah and Zah I, I, I don't get it. The woman has lied to you over, over, over. You can't see. <laughs> Somebody once said to me, eh, Lady Reverend, even if their line is nice. So Jael is just standing at the door. Turn aside, my Lord. Turn aside inside. Turn aside to me. Don't be afraid. Assuring words. The Bible says, by wings of a warish woman, a man shall be brought to a piece of bread. In this case, Jael is not whorish, but she is somebody who dwells in tents, Somebody who is a homemaker, somebody who is a housewife, but she too has something to contribute to make God's victory complete. <laughs> and she does that by using whatever gift she has. She is inviting and she knows what to say. But some of you, when your husband comes from work, you even look at him. You say, hey, welcome, welcome. Hey, come here. What are you? So it's like, I didn't know that brothers were very um, uh, sensitive about when they come home, how they are received. But I had, <laughs> I had a pastor who preaches on marriage, Jimmy Evans, and he said that, oh, 
when I married Karen, one of the problems was that I thought that when I come home, she will receive me with whistles and bells. But whenever I came home, she will be busy and she will just say hi. <coughs> I was so shocked. I'm like, whistles and bells? Ah, really? Then the next week I went to church and my husband was speaking. He said, brothers, some of you, you thought that when you come to uh, the house, they will stop everything and say, hey, you've come, welcome. You see, now they don't even notice you. I'm like, hey, really? Light has come. So now I learn to stop what I'm doing and look at the person and say, oh, you are home. How are you? You're welcome. Amen, ladies. That was JL's secret. And also, she called him Lord. The Bible says, Sarah, whose daughters you are? Sarah called Abraham Lord and said, whose daughters you are? So far as you are not afraid or struck with amazement. Amen. I have a friend. Her husband has never mentioned her name before. Ever since she married, he just calls her wine, wine. Hey. Like, ooh, 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 ooh. How? I remember sometimes when my husband would call me, and then I'll come and I'll say, Yes, my Lord. Then I'll laugh. He said, Are you serious? You are laughing. <laughs> But ladies, it doesn't take AK-47s, it doesn't take bazookas, it doesn't take paratroopers. We have the weapons that it takes. Amen! <laughs> so this army general, he's taken in by the welcoming of jail. Amen? Sometimes people stay in a church because of your welcoming. Or your face. Yes. You are taking off, you've made your face. Ah. You've brought the offering bowl, you are even looking somewhere. Hey. So we also say that, hey, then let me keep my money. The way you have made your face. <laughs> so you are not added to the church, you are subtracting. So he turned aside to her into the tent. And she covered him with a rag. Hey. She covered him with a duvet. Hey, women, you are wild. You are coming to kill the person. And you are covering the person with a duvet. But beloved, men love softness. Brothers, am I saying something? <laughs> and he said to her, please give me a little water to drink. Hmm. For I am thirsty. And she opened a skin of milk and gave him a drink and covered him. Amen. I think some versions said that she, she gave him a, 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 a skin of milk in a lovely jar. You see, how do you present even your food? Ladies, look, a lot of people eat with their eyes. So when the food looks some way, but JL had learned the secret. He asked for water and she brought milk. It's like, oh, you're asking for water. Oh, but you must be very tired. So let me give you water, but I'll add some cold milk for you. And she brings it in a lovely bowl or skin. And I said, like, wow. And then she covers him. Oh, you sleep. Sisera, sleep. All these things put Sisera to sleep. Ladies, we can put our husbands. <laughs> but with the right motive. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I'm ending soon.
Again, verse 20, he said unto her, Stand in the door of the tent, and it shall be when any man doth come and inquire of thee and say, Is there any man here that thou shalt say no? Then Jael, Heber's wife, took a nail of the tent and took a hammer in her hand and went softly, killing you but softly. Amen. Killing me softly. <laughs> and smote the nail into his temples and fastened it into the ground. For he was fast asleep. Oh, pity and weary. So he died. And behold, as Barak pursued Sisera, Jael came out to meet him and said unto him, Come. And I'll show you the man thou seekest. And when he came into her tent, behold, Sisera lay dead, and the nail was in his temples. So God subdued on that day Jabin, the king of Canaan, before the children of Israel. Amen. Now, I am not saying that for ladies to have diabolical minds, but I'm saying that there are weapons that are not carnal. And yet they are mighty through God in destroying the enemy. Amen. Amen. Ladies, are you getting me? Don't go and say, today they showed us how to kill men. <laughs> no, I'm going to say that. They said we should go softly and kill them. <laughs> softly. Amen. And later, Deborah and Barak sing a song of praise, and Jael is celebrated as the person who has brought victory. In the same way, ladies, we are called to destroy the enemy. The Bible says, I will put enmity between the woman and you, and between her seed and your seed. Revelation chapter 12, and I'm ending. Are you there? If you are not there, say, wait for me. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. And she being with child, she was in the throes, in the throes of becoming a mother, cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And he still drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, to devour her child as soon as it was born. In spite of all this intimidation by the enemy, the Bible says in verse 5, And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Amen. Amen. I just want to say in conclusion that it has been determined that there will be enmity between the woman and the man, uh, the serpent, and between her seed and the devil's seed. And so as soon as the woman is pregnant, before she will even give birth, Satan is standing there as a dragon with seven heads and the heads of dragons and things to frighten you. So he uses fear to stop us from birthing our dreams, birthing our destinies, birthing what God has called us to. But the promise is that he may bruise our heel and therefore our pace of walking may be slow, but we will bruise the head of the enemy. May every woman, every mother rise up and become the Deborahs, the jails, and the people that God has destined us to be. Woman, it's your honor. God gave honor to jail in spite of the fact that she was not an army commander. Today on Mother's Day, may God impart something to you so that you rise up with whatever gifting, whatever service, whatever opportunity you are giving, so that we may bruise 
the head of the serpent and bring his kingdom to come on this earth in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand to your feet, please. I need the musicians to help me, please. Every head bowed and every eye closed. We have heard the word of God. It's not a word for only women. Barak did his part. God did his part. And we need each other in the body of Christ. I want you to pray that God, whatever gifting, whatever calling, may I not complain that one person I'm a prophetess, one person I'm a mother, one person I'm a judge. How does God expect me to do all that? But Lord, may you rather give us grace, give us wisdom, multiply the mercies upon our lives so that, Lord, we will fulfill our ministries and fulfill our calling. And it is therein that we will find fulfillment in you. I want you to talk to God personally for a very short time. Mean business with him. And tell God, give me the spirit of loyalty to you that I may continue in the things I have learned and I've been convinced of. That my love will not grow cold. That I will not make a detour. Keep me on this path. Give me endurance so that I'll hear your well done at the end of it all. Hallelujah. Please give us a song. We are ending soon. Talk to God. It's not just a formality. Talk to God. He's hearing from your heart. Some of us is a spirit of fear. A spirit of intimidation, a spirit of feeling useless, a spirit of feeling we have nothing to offer. But today, God is saying, you are important to me. In the name of Jesus. You are here like that this morning. You want to say, Lady Reverend, pray for me. I don't know whether I'll go to heaven or hell when I die. Lady Reverend, I don't know Jesus. I need to work on my relationship with God. I want God to come into my life and be the Lord of my life. You are like that here this morning. Forget about who is on your left and who is on your right. Give me the privilege of leading you to the throne of grace. You are here like that. Just lift up your hands wherever you are standing and I'll pray for you. Wherever you are standing, let your hand go high up above your shoulder and I'll pray for you. Father, we thank you for your word that has come to us. Give us change of hearts. Change our desires. Help us to believe that when we seek first your kingdom, everything else will be added. Father, your word says darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but your light shall arise. You say arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen. May the light of your people shine. May your people arise like Deborah, like Barak, like Jael. May the things of this world and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the love for other things, may it be quenched in our lives. And may we seek you first. And Lord, I know that all other things shall be added unto us. Send help to us so that we may fulfill our destiny. In Jesus' name, amen. Please take your seat. your feet. Let's appreciate God. Oh, go ahead and clap.
clap for Jesus. Let's appreciate the vessel of God. Wow. Amen. Wow. Wow. What a way. Pastor Frank Wells, um, Mama was preaching. Pastor Frank said, this thing has to be continued next week. <laughs> You never know what God can do, you know. With God, nothing is impossible. <laughs> Amen. Wow. I have not heard a message preached from Judges chapter 4 like this. And actually, the whole chapter about Deborah, a mother, a judge, a wife, and a prophetess. She said to Barak, I will come with you. And she did go and jail soft woman. Oh, it's nice when women are soft. Oh, I like that. It's like when you come home and you meet a soft woman. Ah. <laughs> Please help me. Let's appreciate Episcopal Lady. Come on, let's give God praise for her life. Mama Adelaide, thank you. Thank you. It's God who sent you. Your, your words carry grace. The Bible says when Jesus finished reading in the synagogue, they marveled at the gracious words that proceeded out of her mouth. We can tell there's grace in your life and we appreciate you. Please help me. Let's appreciate Mama Adelaide, Episcopal Sister Adelaide. Thank you very much. Please be seated. Something of God has been deposited here. I know some Deborahs are being birthed. Some Jaels are being birthed. Male Deborahs and male Jaels are also being birthed. Amen. Your life will never be the same again. Let's appreciate God. The, the good news is Mama will be back. As for when we, we will pray her back. Because Bible says since the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffered and the violent shall take it back. Sharia. So she'll be back by the by the special grace of God. Amen. How many of you agree with me? Yeah. I mean, how many of you want to head back next week? <laughs> she, 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 she was in Fiji, then in Singapore, and in London. So this morning she told me, I just want to go home. Man. But you never know, God can make her stay another week. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God. Church is so sweet. And especially when you have grace vessels speaking. It makes church worth it. How many of you enjoyed the service? And I believe some are watching online. And the same grace is also meeting you there. Amen. Well, it's time for us to get ready to close. And we'll be doing our offerings and tithes and seeds. If you are watching online, the information will be online. You can do it. And if you are... A vista, you are not under obligation to give. However, the scriptures say it's more blessed to give than to receive. There are different ways of giving. You can scan the QR code. It takes you straight to uh, all online banking. And actually, there's free Wi-Fi here. So the free Wi-Fi, if just in case your phone connectivity is playing up, you can use the Wi-Fi. And if you are where you are sitting, you can't see the QR code. Us, ushers are standing in the aisles. We've printed out QR codes. You can scan it. You can give through PayPal, Apple Pay, Google Pay, um, direct bank transfer, or even text giving. If as long as it's UK uh, phone number, you can give by text. And the largest amount you can give by text is 20 pounds by texting to the information. Uh, texting, yeah, the. the uh, 
case he give, and then the amount. And so be be part of the giving. Shall we pray over our offerings and tithes and giving? Father, you said in your word that it's more blessed to give than to receive. We want to validate the blessing you have received on us through our commitment in giving. Bless every seed sown, every tithe given to your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, let's, let's do that as we... What song are you going to give us? Forever. Okay, I think it's a nice one. <laughs> All right. Forever and ever I'll rise you of these days I have to organize a special banquet just for mothers on Mother's Day. Yeah. Uh, what do you think? We are here. Huh? I promise you. I promise you. Uh, it, will, it will be done. Not Father's Day. Mother's Day, I mean. On Mother's Day. I will organize a special banquet. So after church, in the evening, it will be an evening something, and then you go somewhere. Yeah, you go somewhere. When you come to church, you get your ticket. No, it will not be for sale or paid, but you have to pick a ticket in church. Yeah, on time before the before I start the preaching. <laughs> if you come after the preaching, you forfeit a ticket. <laughs> Is it a good idea? <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, we thank God for today. 
I think it's always good to have another touch. And I believe that today's service has been refreshing to all of us. And it's a nice Mother's Day service. Please help me. Let's appreciate our Jesus for organizing this. Amen. Have we, have we already watched the announcement? We've watched everything. Okay, so now we can just close and go home. Kensington, Harold is not far from here. <laughs> you can just walk there like you are buying anything. You don't buy anything. Just you don't have to be spending money when my birthday is coming. I just <laughs> hey! this birthday thing there is they are using it at every occasion. Yeah, but Kensington, this is a bit different from Paddington. Because there are a lot of shop. I think is it have a something. Yes, and all that. Just if you have your children, just take them walk around. Let's hope it's not raining. How's the temperature? The weather like? It's it's cold eh? Yeah, get your coat and wear it. Eh? The shops are not cold inside. And I think some of us are taking our mothers out. Please, when we close, if your mother is not around or something, try and call them. Like American zone is different. They have the wrong. They drive on the wrong side of the road. Mother's Day is wrong timing. But you, know, you understand what I'm saying, especially those of you who, wherever your mother is, if it's Mother's Day as well, call them. Show some love. Or take her out. Take your, and um, as Lady Adley said, some of the husbands after church, there are a lot of restaurants here. You don't have to buy food. You can just go to the restaurant and just order cook. Or some hot chocolate or something. The, I, the whole thing is just it's you and your wife. And let the children come if they, if they don't have any. I mean, it's nice. Show the children that there are times that family has, is spending family time together. I think it's very important. It's very important. So they look forward to mother, Mother's Day coming to church. And they know after church, something is going to happen. I promise you one day we will do a banquet for all mothers. Amen. But guys, you know I love you very much. And we thank God. Why don't you lift up your hands and let's thank God for today. Lift up your hands. Let's thank God. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. We are grateful to you. Father, we appreciate you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for today's service. We are grateful to you. Lift up your hands and thank him for what he said to you through the preaching. What, what has come to you in the service. Just lift up your hands and give him praise. Father, we are grateful to you. We are grateful to you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. To him who by his power created the heavens and the earth unto Jesus Christ our Savior, unto the Holy Spirit our teacher, we ascribe all honor, praise, dominion, power, majesty, glory, thanksgiving, wisdom, even now and forevermore. May the Lord bless you and keep you. 
May he lift up his countenance upon you and be gracious unto you. May he cause his face to shine on you and give you peace. May he deliver you from shame. May he deliver you from hurt. May he deliver you from harm. May he deliver you from danger. May he deliver you from temptation and deliver you from falling. I bless your food and I bless your drink. I bless your going out and I bless your coming in. I pray that this month God will show up in your, on your favor. God will show up in your favor and on your behalf. This month, may heaven turn things round for you. Whatever the enemy has thrown up against you, I pray that God will turn it in your favor. God will turn it in your favor. I release miracle jobs. I release miracle monies. I release miracle uh, promotions. I release miracle scholarships and bursaries. I release miracle mortgages and housing. I release miracle, miracle cars, miracle medical reports. I release miracle opportunities, miracle documents, miracle court victories. In the name of Jesus, may God visit you. May it be obvious that God has showed up in your case. May God show up in your case. May God show up in your case. And may he show you a token for good. May God show you a token for good in the name of Jesus you will not be hospitalized you will not bury a loved one you are covered by the blood of the lamb vehicles you travel in are covered by the blood of the lamb your food your drink is covered by the blood of the lamb I decree blessings upon you go from this place with this assurance that in Christ Jesus you are more than a conqueror and everyone who believes shall amen. amen i have a feeling that between today and wednesday about three people here are going to have a very big testimony surprise <laughs> one one of them is has been a long-standing battle and it looks like it's not going to work for you but i see things suddenly turning around in, in your favor Two things I want to say before we just exit the building. Number one, next Sunday we are in Hilton Paddington. So next Sunday, remember we are in Hilton Paddington. It's very interesting that coincidentally we are here today and also we had a, a lady, uh, Adelaide, come in. Very interesting. Next Sunday we are back in Hilton Paddington. And when we close, if you have a cr critical situation that requires urgent divine intervention please make your way to the front and the pastors and i will pray with you yesterday at chat time when we finished one lady came to see me she was in the london church but now located to chatham so she's in the chatham church and she told me how she's not been well she's been through a few things so i just prayed with her um but when I pray, I finished praying with her. It's very interesting. When I was praying, then I saw it's like something has been put in food for her to eat. And I saw something that looked like brown balls, like, you know, meatballs. Something like brown in food. And she has eaten and the thing was staying in her system somewhere. So I started cursing. I started cursing food that people have eaten. Or she has, any evil that was put in food against her. As I was praying, I guessed it. I said, I did declare your deliverance. When I finished, she looked at me like she's confused. He said, Pastor, I went to Ghana to go and visit my sick mom recently, and I was poisoned. I've been hospitalized for a long time. I just came out of hospital. I had poison in the food. And I said, this God thing is a serious thing. She said, you are a real man of God. I said, I know that, but I didn't plan it. No, no, this is, so when we close and you have a situation that requires the hand of God, don't look po political. Come and let's pray. Come and, I mean, critical. Because the atmosphere has done a lot of miracles already. But if it's critical, please come forward and let's pray. I almost forgot to acknowledge our first timers. Because, please, do you mind if you sit down for a moment? So if this is your first time in Caris on a Sunday like this, if you don't mind, can you rise to your feet so we can acknowledge you if this is your first time on a encourage on us? Oh, come on, let's appreciate them. Let's appreciate them. Let's appreciate them. You're welcome. You're welcome. Please.
please keep standing. Sorry for I mean, we are not putting you on the spot. We are celebrating for today. And thank you for joining us in this service. It's a prayer that you have actually been blessed and something good from God has come towards you. A bit of piece of information, just in case you don't have a church. You are born again, you don't have a church, you call your home church. Finally, you have found one. And we are very happy to fellowship with you here and grow together with you. So, welcome. And we want to assure you, within three months of being in this church, something good will happen and your life will never be the same again. So, come again and again. And secondly, I want to let you know that after the service, we have a special preparation for you because we knew somebody special like you be coming and so there's preparation where the, our special team will take you out to refresh you and interact with you just briefly but before that i want to pray for you please let's pray father bless these precious friends who join our service today we pray that let the grace work in here follow them and show up this week this month to your glory we bless you that any burden that followed you here is not following you out of here be blessed in jesus name amen now as we clap for them i'll ask them we hope you are blessed by today's message it is the will of god that we all come to accept jesus as our lord and savior and come into the new life in christ if you have just said the sinner's prayer please send us an email at amen at charis.org where we can connect with you and help you with your spiritual development we look forward to speaking with you Thank you for tuning in. We hope you were blessed by today's message. To everyone who has been faithful with their tithes and offering, we thank you for partnering with us in spreading the gospel. For those of you who wish to give, you can give via the online giving form at charis.org forward slash giving or scan the QR code. You can also give via Apple Pay, Google Pay, PayPal, direct bank transfer or text KCGIVE and the amount to 70085. Text giving has a limit of £20. International givers can also give via international bank transfer using the IBAN number and SwiftBIC displayed on the screen. May God bless you for giving. Why not browse through our YouTube channel for more teachings and also make sure you subscribe and click on the notification icon to be notified of any new message. You can also find more teachings by Pastor David on various audio streaming platforms such as SoundCloud, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts and Amazon Music. We look forward to fellowshipping with you again. God bless you.